Judy, do you still have solar eclipse glasses on? Well, of course, William. You do know that that's past. Ah, William, but that's where you're wrong. I'll show everyone a solar eclipse next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We are at Seabright Gardens where we found this hookerella called solar eclipse. Now this solar eclipse will come back for you year after year. And out at Seabright Garden you can find so many wonderful and beautiful plants both with foliage and flowers. And speaking of beautiful flowers, on the show today we are going to be going out to Swan Island for their annual Dahlia Festival. Also coming up today, we'll teach you how to love your lawn in the late summer. For the past month or so, we've been watching our producer's new deck being uninstalled, reinstalling, and it is a finished product right now. So I'm with Josh, and Josh, what's the name of your company? Northwest Outdoor Living and Renovation. And so you were the contractor that did the demo and completed the project. That was me. So what was the install like? Can you tell us about it? Sure, sure. So this this was pretty straightforward. It's It was just a low ground level deck. There wasn't anything too tricky. We ran into a few things with uh, the siding on the house and some stuff that we had to address so that it was taken care of properly but for the most part, um, everything was pretty smooth sailing, nothing too crazy. Uh, well, I love the detail of the lighting. I mm -hmm. think that's so nice because it's kind of a warning that there's a step, but it's really that added kind of interest at nighttime. Absolutely, absolutely. So lighting is, is one of those things. It's a very simple addition to any deck project. There's uh, several different options that you can add, both in uh, flush mount, uh, top of the floor lighting, there's a lot of recess lighting options, there's post mounted mm. options. So there's a lot of neat things you can do that really dress it up and give character to it. Yeah, and so, you know, I know that as a homeowner, I can do this myself, sure. maybe, but really to get a professional group in here probably is the best way to go. Ab absolutely. Like with anything, there's tricks of the trade that make this go a lot smoother. So if you're the do-it-yourselfer that loves building, you know, with your hands and enjoying that aspect of the project, then by all means, go for it. Um, but there's a lot of little simple things, a lot of the tricks of the trade that we've you know, learn through experience of and, and <laughs> learning, of course, the hard way over the years. Oh, so, gosh, sure. so there's a lot of things that um, come by using someone that has experience in doing this. Uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, it shows because it is very professionally done. Yeah, thank you. So now we're going to go talk to Derek from Fibron and learn more about the maintenance and more details about that product. Now I'm going to talk with Derek from Fibron. So Derek, the project came out beautiful. It just looks lovely. Yeah, Josh did a great job um, in the finish, the detail, the lighting, and the picture framing came out flawless. Yeah, that is nice. And so I noticed, and I meant to talk to Josh about this, that I don't see a lot of screw heads. So that's a different kind of an install. Yeah, so they used our Phantom GT hidden fasteners and uh, basically there's grooves cut down the side of the board and these little clips go inside um, and they're fastened to the joists, but you are unable to see them from the top of the deck. It does look so professional. It's just a whole different look than to a regular deck. Yeah, it is. Very nice. And so what about maintenance? So what do we do ongoing during the season and then next spring again? So maintenance is going to be, um, I, I would say, low maintenance. You treat it almost like your car. You're just going to wash it. You know, maybe some people do it every week, but I would say as far as the deck goes, maybe quarterly at most. Um, you could take out some dish soap, a hose, and just brush it down with a push broom. Um, and yeah, as far as maintenance, that's going to keep it looking brand new. That is pretty easy. So we have pretty easy maintenance here, but what if we're in a kind of different climate, different kind of things going on all season? So if you're in a colder climate um, and you get snow or ice build up on your deck, uh, there's two ways you can go about it. One is if you're going to use a shovel, we just recommend using a plastic uh, shovel head. And then you can also use ice melt on your deck but you're going to use a lower grade that is safe for uh, using, uh, safe for use on cement. But in the springtime, there may be a slight residue on the deck after everything's thawed out. And then you're just going to do the same push broom, water, and a little dish soap, and it'll look like new again. Uh, still better than taking care of a wooden deck. Absolutely. And then what about a warranty or um, kind of lifelong of it? 
So with our warranty, um, the, the basic warranty on it is it's not going to rot, warp, splinter. You're going to see no, uh, no bending of the boards. But as far as the aesthetic goes, um, you're going to have a 25 year stain and fade warranty. So it should look the way that it appeared when you first put it down for 25 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then I love the lighting on it. And there are other kind of packages for lighting. Yeah. So the lighting that we have on it, it's good for um, not only seeing that you have a step coming up, but it just gives a uh, better look at night. And we've got railing that goes, or excuse me, lighting that goes into our railing, lighting that goes into the riser boards, and lighting that will go on the accent around the deck. Ah, and then railings. Yeah, I forgot about railings. So that's another package we can get. Yeah, so we've got two different types of railings, really strong, will last a long time, durable, beautiful, um, and just like with all of our other products, come with a great warranty and you're gonna have no issue. Derek, I'm always so surprised that it just looks so much like wood. And I noticed that um, beforehand, it's um, the same finish on the top side and the bottom side. Yeah, so the same finish on top and bottom. So in an application like this, you're not going to be going under the deck. But should you damage something on the top, you could flip a board. Oh. But if you have a second story application, when you're looking up, it will appear as though you're looking at the same wood grain pattern on both sides. Well, you know, the Fiberon does have a wonderful website. You can see all the different products, the different stains. There's even a place to do designs on it. So it's a lot of fun. It's very interactive. And you can find out the distributors in your area so you can actually go see the products. And also contractors available. So go to GardenTime.com. TV. We'll click you over to that website and have a lot of fun and maybe get a new deck this year. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. You deserve the best. So at Capital Subaru, we make sure you're getting the best experience at every touch point. Award-winning customer service, a wide selection of new Subarus to choose from, two years complimentary service on all new vehicles, and perks you'll only find at Capital Subaru. Start your next adventure on the Parkway. Now during the Subaru A Lot to Love event, save $5,500 off MSRP on the all-new 2017 Subaru Outback 3.6R Touring or get 0% APR for 63 months. Capital Subaru, your way on the Parkway. A destination farm and garden market featuring the very best each season has to offer. Smith Berry Barn offers seasonal farm fresh fruits and vegetables and specialty herbs and perennials. Visit the historic barn for distinctive gifts, gourmet foods, and homemade milkshakes. Right now we have fresh picked or pick your own berries ready in our fields. Here's what we have to offer this week. Centrally located off of Shoals Ferry Road between Sherwood and Hillsboro, Smith Berry Barn, growing good taste from the ground up. The fields are in bloom and looking beautiful. We welcome everyone to come visit us here at Swan Island Dahlias. Stop by Swan Island Dahlias in Canby and stroll the 40 acres of blooms. And don't forget the Dahlia Festival the last weekend in August and Labor Day weekend. During the festival, you can see over 400 cut flower displays, enjoy specialty foods, and see flower arranging demonstrations. Swan Island Dahlias is located in Canby, just minutes south of Portland. Come, come see us! us. Cyberon. Deck it right the first time. I am at one of my favorite gardens to be in the summer. I'm at Swan Island Dahlia's in Canby with Nick. And Nick, it is beautiful out here as always. Really, really nice right now, right? Just getting that new burst of fresh new blooms without a lot of old blooms on the plants. It's really kind of the time that I like the best. Is oh, the sure. Plant. Everything looks fresh and, fresh and new. Uh, so we invite everyone to come out because the fields are open. But I wanted to talk today about all the different flower types of dahlias. I don't know of any other flower that has so many different types. I mean, look at this one. <laughs> this is one of the big daddies. Um, I, I don't know the name. Emory Paul. Okay, and then this little tiny one, and they're both dahlias. Right, they come in so many different sizes, shapes, styles, heights. Some grow, you know, 12 inches high, some grow six feet tall. Every variety has its own unique characteristic. Yeah, can you call out some of these, and maybe some of your favorites, but look at that red one. Yeah, now that's what we call uh, Red Devil. It's a cactus style, and they have the long spiky petals. Yeah, it's a cactus style. It's just a classification by the American Dahlia Society. And then you can get into 
collarette types, which are an open centered with a collar around them. Um, these are a decorative, which is more of a, a called a formal deck. Uh, Waterly style, probably the, the number one arranging type flower for arrangements. Arranging, uh, it makes it easy and neat style. Uh, <laughs> people just seem to flock to those for arranging. You have an unusual wow, look uh, at that. orchid style, mm -hmm. which is, that's honka, it's an orchid style, it's been around quite a while because of the petals all go to a point, but there's only one row of petals, so it's so, a little... So different, <clears throat> I mean, that looks like some kind of a daisy, I mean, I would say maybe right, just a daisy kinda, or something. Right, Then you have like anemone styles, which are a, kind of a pin cushion with a row of petals around the outside. Um, and you can get into where you get lacinated, where the petals are split on the ends, where they've been like, like sheared a little bit. Uh, they really, I mean, there's cactus styles, decorative styles, but in each cactus and decorative, there's different inner, inner varieties and inner types that they can classify them on down for people to show them in shows. They get mm. really technical about oh, I bet. size and what classification they should go into and color, color classifications. You know, this one, and this one's kind of an unusual one when you showed Emery Paul. This, oh, is actually a, this is actually a cousin uh. from that one. Once in a while you get genetic sports mm -hmm. where they'll rarely change color, but this has the, the magenta stripe in it that came from that one, but the plant itself turned into what they call a variegated with the stripe wow. in it. So they're both have the same plant characteristics, same size bloom, uh, same tubers basically looking at them, but it just has a different color in them. Wow. Is there any color that you're striving to get? You know, they're trying to get like the blue rose or the... Always trying to get blue dahlias. Yeah. That's, that's the, the magic thing. And, <laughs> you know, we get into things that we call like, we call this beautiful. It's a bluish lavender, you mm -hmm. know. So anytime you can get something that's close to the blues, and put blue in the name and help sell them a lot. <laughs> this is one of our favorites that we plant right here oh, so, so people pretty. can see it. Because a lot of types of dahlias, I many times like the plant as much as the bloom. Hmm. Because if you get a nice plant that's very stocky and easy to contain and bushes out really well and then puts your bloom on top, it's very attractive in the garden. Sure. So some flowers make great, great show flowers or great cut flowers but don't have the near attractive plant. Mm. So Blutiful is one that just, it's a great cut flower, it's a great plant, wow. uh, it's stocky and sturdy and it's one of my favorites. Ah, one to remember. <clears throat> well, you know, for home gardeners, what should we be doing for our, our dahlias in our garden right now? Well, right now, basically, you know, we're getting into the warmer weather, so you always would watch for spider mites, which mm. start on the bottom of the plants. And if your bottom leaves are turning yellow, then you may definitely need to spray for mites, but extremely important to heavy water this time mm. of year. <clears throat> much better to water one time a week and water it eight inches down than to go out every morning in five minutes with a hose sure. because people say they water them every day but they're not blooming right. Well, that water yeah. doesn't go down deep enough to the tubers and if they, if they can't absorb proper moisture, you'll get a kind of a green plant that goes in dormancy uh, and just sure. looks healthy and looks and stays there but very, very few bloom. But make sure the plants that got full sun too to, to get more blooms. Um, make sure you cut the old blooms off. Okay. Everywhere you cut the dahlia, it branches out more. So you get more, nice. more stems and that's more blooms. That's the best blooms. part. <laughs> <laughs> and I know the festival is coming up. So that's the last weekend of um, August and Labor Day weekend. weekend. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Ah, and things will be going on. I know you have classes. You can see all the beautiful cut flower displays. Yeah, over 15,000 blooms indoors, wow. professionally arranged, uh, like 400 and some arrangements. We do uh, talks on growing dahlias, uh, talks on arranging dahlias. Uh, we have a tuber dividing uh, Ooh, demonstration. Tuber dividing is really quite simple once you see it <laughs> in hand. Uh, it, you know, we do drawings, we do pictures and stuff, and it, it, people sometimes don't get it, but if you can ever see it done right in front of you, it, it's really a lot easier than, than what sometimes people think. So then we have, you know, fresh cut flowers available, food vendors are here. Um, we're going to have live music this year. Oh, fun. Um, so it's a big, you know, a lot of picnic tables, a lot of places to sit and enjoy your lunch. Uh, just a great day to come, come out and enjoy the yeah. walk through the fields of flowers. We have pathways for you to stay on and walk down and look at all the varieties in bloom. And that way you can you can go to the inside arra inside arrangements and see what the flower looks like. But sometimes you're not attracted to the flower as much on the plant, mm -hmm. maybe as you are in arrangement. And sometimes you're more attracted to the one on the plant than you know. It can be vice you versa. Gotta you gotta see may, it all. Yeah, you gotta see it all. <laughs> that way you can compare how they grow. Because you may walk down there and think it's a 
a three foot tall, tall plant and walk out and it's six oh, or seven feet. Right. You're going, I don't want it that tall. Some people ask, the new thing I think in landscaping is to get shorter varieties. Right, so right. We, we have a section that we grow a lot of, uh, you know, three foot and under plants, which are easy to take care of. So much to see, just so much to see. And really to bring the family out because there's places to picnic. You can bring a blanket, bring the kids, bring the camera and yeah, come out definitely. and talk to all the staff because it's really um, a fun plant to have in your garden and to have cut flowers inside too. So come out and see Nick and everybody here. Thanks so much. Right, thanks, Judy. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save five dollars on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Stop and smell a rose, hear a child laugh, see the beauty that is Oregon. You will find all this and more at the Oregon Garden in Historic Silverton. 400 year old oaks, edible landscapes, a children's garden, the Oregon Garden has something for everyone. You can ensure the garden remains a jewel in the mid Willamette Valley through your support as an individual, family, or corporate member. Support the garden that showcases the diverse botanical beauty of our state, the Oregon Garden. at Oregon Turf and Tree Farm and it's a third generation sod and grass seed farm but we're here today to talk about our lawns and our turf in the summertime. So I'm with Jack Carlin and Jack where are you what alliance are you from? I'm with the Turf Grass Water Conservation Alliance or TWCA. We're a 501 C3 nonprofit organization. We qualify drought tolerant turf through multi-year multi-site trialing. Uh, we have a third party peer review process that does all of the qualifications based only on the objective data that we've co uh, collected through that program. Okay, so you're here in the Northwest, but across uh, the whole country? Yeah, that's right. So we have 14 trial locations across all of North America, uh, going all the way from Riverside, California, up to Guelph, Ontario, uh, and pushing all the way down the Eastern Seaboard in Virginia, and then through the transition zone as well. Wow, that's a lot of trials. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so what can we tell the homeowners about how to take care of our lawns to have them look pretty nice during, you know, the summertime where it can be so dry and so hard to grow lawns? Well, there are a lot of things people can do and you can get as complicated as you'd like to. But uh, to keep it kind of simple, the first thing that you want to do is start with good genetics. And so I would uh, recommend everybody start with TWCA qualified turf products, whether that's sod or, or grass seed. And that's really going to give you the best base to start from. Uh, you're going to have a couple other things you can do. Um, when you do your fertility, typically people want to see green grass and so they think, oh, well, we'll put down more fertilizer. It, it's usually better for drought tolerance if you put down uh, a single rate, uh, one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. Do that in the, in the spring, usually around mid-March, uh, and then stop your fertility program. And that'll allow your grass to come up, be vigorous and green but it won't promote active growth through the driest part of the year. Uh, yeah. That makes sense because you don't want to be mowing it a lot and you just want to have it tough as possible. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And uh, you know, when you, when you bring up mowing, uh, the first thing you want to do is have nice sharp blades. So sharpen it in the winter. Uh, and then if you're a homeowner like me who doesn't pick up all of the toys all the time <laughs> or, or has errant tree roots, you're probably going to want to sharpen your blades again once probably mid-season, July, maybe early August just to make sure that you're actually cutting that blade and not just shredding the, braid, the blades of grass. Um, so that's really what you want to do. Make sure that if you're going to mow your, your grass, mow it uh, as tall as possible. And when you do mow it, only take off about a third of the total height. And that, that way you'll have good, healthy grass and you won't, uh, 
do any kind of long-term damage to the whole plant. Uh, and then but what about watering? Because it's like, should we just keep pouring water on it to try to keep it as healthy as possible? What can we do? Yeah, no, I, I totally understand <laughs> that impulse. And I, I'm sure my neighbors wish I watered my grass a little more. Uh, no, they're, they're, you want to make sure that you're watering to the ET or evapotranspiration of your plant. Uh, there's a, a great resource called Know Your Water Number. It's on uh, conserveh2o.org. Oh, yes. uh, and they really encourage you to, to water to that number. So put down that amount of water, run your sprinkler for that long. Um, too much water, your plant will use it, but it doesn't need it. And, and too little water, obviously, you're going to promote uh, dying. Uh, and then what about optimum time to water? Yeah, so if you're going to be watering, you want to do it uh, either after 6 p.m. or before 10 a.m. So you can really reduce the amount of water that you lose to evaporation and to wind loss. So that's the best time to put your water down. Uh, so all good tips. All good tips for us to remember. If you have any other questions, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click over to their website and also to conserve H2O. Thanks so much. It's really good information. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. I'm at Little Baja on Burnside and I'm with Wayne and Wayne you guys are container experts so this is the middle of summer so what kind of tips do you have for us about watering our containers? Well one of the things that concerns us most here at Little Baja is that uh, people are our customers, your viewers, won't wa give enough water to their trees that are in containers and containers, uh, trees in containers themselves, need at least one to two gallons of water every single day, especially in this heat wave we're having, because they don't have any other water source than what we give them. They can't get water from the ground. And does it matter what kind of tree, maple, conifer? Well, the, the evergreens are a little less sensitive to not getting watered every day. They're not going to immediately shrivel up on you. But you take a, a sensitive tree like a maple here, ones with the de nice delicate leaves, and just one day in 100 degree weather without water, and it'll shrivel up on you, and it'll be dry the rest of the summer. And what about containers, terracotta versus concrete glazed? Well, it, does, it makes little difference except for the fact that the terracotta is uh, breeze uh, more and tends to dry out faster than uh, concrete or uh, your Asian pottery and so it's important important to make sure that they get watered especially that as well them too and that they have good drainage because sure. when you when you give them a couple of gallons a day you want to make sure that water runs through the bottom and it doesn't flood and stay in the roots. Well that's a great tip so if you have any other questions please come out to Little Baja. Thanks so much Wayne. Thank you you're welcome. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. The fields are in bloom and looking beautiful. We welcome everyone to come visit us here at Swan Island Dahlias. Stop by Swan Island Dahlias in Canby and stroll the 40 acres of blooms. And don't forget the Dahlia Festival the last weekend in August and Labor Day weekend. During the festival, you can see over 400 cut flower displays, enjoy specialty foods, and see flower arranging demonstrations. Swan Island Dahlias is located in Canby, just minutes south of Portland. Come, come see us! It's summer clearance time at Standard TV and Appliance. Save up to 72% on closeouts, overstocks, floor models, and special purchases at Standard, including refrigerators and freezers, washers and dryers, ranges, wall ovens and cooktops, top brand dishwashers, beauty rest and memory foam mattresses, HD TVs and home theater. Plus, save up to 47% on display and closeout pro style appliances. Only while they last. Standard TV and Appliance. I'm at Portland Nursery on Division to talk about a wonderful event coming up. First, I'm going to talk to George, the manager here. And George, what is the event going on soon? Uh, this is on Saturday, September 9th. We're going to have our annual garden party for Impact Northwest. That is wonderful. The garden center must just look beautiful that time of year. It really is. The fall comes, start coming out, and it's just a great, great time. Uh, and has Portland Nursery been involved with this for a long time? Oh, yes. Portland Nursery has been a proud sponsor of uh, Impact Northwest for well over a decade. And I know you do more things with them because I've come to apple tasting in 
brought cans of food and that goes to them too. That is correct. Ah, well there's more than just a big party going on. There's actually a container contest. Now I'm going to talk to Liz Burns who's with Impact Northwest. And so Liz, what about this container contest? Well, we have a garden container contest at the um, garden party every year. This year we're going to have a professional group, um, including George usually enters a pot, which is a winner sometimes. <laughs> and then we're, uh, we're inviting the public to um, enter in the contest. We have pots donated by Campania. Oh. Uh, that way the people making the donation of the, of the planted containers don't have the expense of the pot. They can go to our website, impactnw.org, and they can fill out the online form to enter the contest, and that way securing a pot for themselves. And then over the Labor Day weekend, um, they can come into the nursery and pot up here. Um, we'll provide the pots and the soil. They need to provide the plants, and they can be entered in the container contest. And every pot will be sold at the at the garden party, and all the proceeds go to Impact oh, Northwest. Wonderful. Even if you don't win the whole contest, you're still supporting Impact Northwest. And is there a prize for the amateurs too? Yeah, the um, amateurs will get a, a $100 visa gift card and oh. the professional um, will get a $250 visa gift card. That is amazing. And I yeah. bet you get all kinds of creativity, don't you? We do. We get a real mix of people um, entering different sizes. The pots from um, Campania start at an 11 inch pot okay. up to these big giant, Whoa. like, I don't know how big, but 37 <laughs> inch pots. So tree pots. Yeah, yeah. And so they're fabulous what we have available. That is fun. And can we buy tickets to come to the event too? Yes, the tickets are also available on our website. They're $150 each. As George said, it begins at 5 p.m. and goes to 9. You can register online at impactnw.org. In addition to the garden containers being sold, we have a live auction that will have Alaska Airline tickets. Ooh. We have tickets to Disneyland. Mm -hmm. We have a Puerto Vallarta trip. We have a beach house. We have the Pendleton Roundup. We have um, a kayak. <laughs> wow, just something for everyone. It just sounds yeah. like a lovely party. It is. It's really beautiful. And the nursery is so beautiful that time of year, those late summer evenings. Oh, it's just gorgeous. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, well, now I have to find out about Impact Northwest, what this organization is about. So I'm going to talk to Andy Nelson. And so, Andy, tell us about that organization. Yeah, Judy. Well, you know, we believe nobody should be derailed by a, a hardship, a financial hardship. People lose their jobs. They get sick. And for 50 years, Impact Northwest has been there for our neighbors. We literally started around kitchen tables in the Buckman neighborhood. People got together and were concerned about uh, things that were happening. And, you know, frankly, we're still that same organization. We, we all live here. We serve each other. We serve our neighbors. We've grown to be, you know, a large organization serving 30,000 people a year. And the oh. garden party is just a big day for us to really put that mission on display, gather our friends and family, raise some funds, and really, more importantly, raise the spirit that is Impact Northwest. Oh, that is. It's a celebration of all the work that you do, I'm sure. It's the work that we do. Frankly, it's the work the people we're serving do. They're uh, working hard. Sure. They're, they're, they're coming to that table. And we're just so proud to have work with so many people to get them back on track. Uh, well, you can hear all of the information going on for this wonderful party coming up. So go to gardentime.tv, we'll click you over to the website, get all that information, buy a ticket, or come on in and make a container. Thanks so much, have a wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you for watching Garden Time today, and don't forget, we're going to Europe in 2018 to Paris, London, and Belgium. Now for more information on that wonderful trip, and for anything you might have questions from on the show today, you can always go to gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.